Howdy folks, Carl Jordan here, Pioneer Field Agronomist in Northwest Indiana. Uh, today I'm in Pulaski County scouting a field of soybeans to uh, help aid in a replant decision. Uh, as you all know, we've had an interesting spring thus far with an earlier than traditional planting window. Uh, and with recent weather, we had uh, two plus inches of rainfall, even though it was welcomed in some geographies, having that much rain all at once can create for some challenges. That in addition to uh, several mornings of patchy frost has made for uh, a challenging start to our soybean plants life. And so uh, today I came across an opportunity for just a, a little bit of a, a, an easy way to distinguish whether one has a soybean seedling disease or if you have a chemical damage. And so uh, I took some pictures here for you all to take a look at, but um, the key differentiator between seedling diseases and, uh, and PPO injury uh, is to see where that damage starts. Does it start above the soil line and stop there, or do you have damage um, from beneath the soil line and, and impacting the root system? And so if you just see damage above the soil surface, that's most likely going to be a PPO injury. And so what happens is when you have a, uh, an exceptional rainfall event like we had uh, here just recently with a, a several inches of moisture, uh, that intense rainfall can actually splash down on the soil surface, make impact, and then carry that chemical up onto the emerging soybean. And so depending on the stage of the soybean seedling's life, it's at, if it's at crook neck stage or the cotyledons are just slightly above the ground, um, that, can, that can make for a very easy way to impact that, uh, that soybean seed. So look for brown necrotic spots. Uh, as long as we don't pinch off the soybean completely, as long as that burn is not uh, so severe, the soybean seedling's likely to carry on. So long as we can preserve a, a couple of those cotyledons, even one yet, that main growing point is going to continue on. Now in the instance where you have uh, you know, brown discoloration uh, below the soil line, well that very well could be a, a seedling disease. And in years like this where we are uh, relatively cool or we have slow to emerge soybeans because they've been in the ground for four weeks time, uh, seeing seedling diseases is very likely. And so the best way to guard against those seedling diseases is to, uh, to put them in the best position for success. Uh, in terms of field conditions, we'd like to make sure that, that that soil is as well aerated as possible, whether that's tile work or, um, or potentially some conditioning of the seed bed before planting. Uh, outside of that, when it comes to making a seed decision, uh, ensuring that you've got products with, with good field tolerances, good genetics when it comes to um, stuff like Phytophthora and things of that nature. And then when it comes to solutions not in the bag from a genetic standpoint, uh, that's where seed treatments come in and can really be a, a strong differentiator uh, across fields. And so those that have been treated with Illumigen seed treatment, uh, where we have multiple modes of action against a number of our fungal pathogens like Pythium, Phytophthora, Rhizoctonia, that's going to give uh, ourselves a, an excellent chance of success when we're planting earlier than the normal window. And as many of you all know, early planted soybeans traditionally yield the best. So anything that we can do to help these uh, seedlings get off to their, their best potential start, uh, that's, that's a good, uh, wise investment. And so uh, just thought a good opportunity to, uh, to learn the key differentiators between seedling diseases and, um, and PPO injury. And uh, that's all I have for you all today. So stay safe, hope the rest of planting is uh, uh, goes by quickly for those of us that have some acres left to go and for those of us that uh, have most of our seed in the ground. Hope we continue to have a great, great start to the growing season. That concludes this Pioneer Agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.